Pre-Christian era Rome, the empire had grown beyond its means, and the rule of the Senate elders had begun to fray at the edges. Let me set the stage for you. The year is 2005. The coolest phone on the market looked like this, and Hollaback Girl was played on every music station in existence, which kind of made five-year-old me want to die inside. But you know what didn't? A certain game made by the beautiful boys over at Capcom. A game that ended up being the precursor to Dead Rising. A game so bloody and fun that it made me want to kill people because that's what games do, of course. We're talking about Shadow of Rome, baby. One of the most underrated PlayStation 2 classics of all time. So what exactly is Shadow of Rome, you may ask? Well, if you're watching this video, then you probably already know, but let's remind everybody, shall we? Shadow of Rome is a hack and slash game, as well as a stealth game, whereas you take control of two characters, Agrippa, a fierce Roman centurion turned gladiator, as well as Octavianus, nephew of Julius Caesar, and a little bitch who can't take a hit. Probably good for the gameplay though, if I'm gonna be honest. But these two characters are close friends and both have the same goal, to save Agrippa's father Vipsanius from being executed. But why is he being executed, you may ask? <laughs> because he killed Caesar! Uh, or did he? <laughs> Spoiler alert, and a uh, historical alert, he actually didn't. Agrippa ends up entering the games as the winner of the final battle in the Great Arena gets to be the one that kills Vipsanius. This would uh, give Agrippa the chance to save his father, somehow. I, I don't get that, you know, there might be a couple guards, you know, it might be a little hard, but you know what, you know, story, it's story, so you know, we're gonna give it a pass. But Octavianus, on the other hand, he runs around Rome trying to find proof of Ipsanius' innocence by knocking out guards and, um, magically growing titties. Uh, <laughs> he also sneaks around and listens in on people and honestly just does some crazy ass shit that makes you really have to think when he plays him. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on the story because I feel like anybody who has the ability to set up a PlayStation 2 emulator should honestly play this game and give it a try, but as far as the gameplay goes, we're going to start off with what Agrippa can do in the game. In Shadow of Rome, there are tons of different weapons to use, from one-handed weapons like gladiuses, maces, scimitars, uh, human heads and arms, you know, you know, the normal stuff, with there also being two-handed weapons like halberds, mauls, and spears. Each weapon type has different abilities, with scimitars and halberds being able to slice limbs, and the maces and mauls being able to smash skulls into a fine red mush. There's also a good amount of different secondary items like shields, bows, and even food items that restore your health. In the gladiatorial sections, there are six battles, except when you do the chariot races when there's four, with the final battles of each section being a boss fight. Now there are five gladiatorial sections, but 12 boss fights in total, I believe. So there's a lot more content than just those battles, at least as far as Agrippa goes. When in gladiatorial fights, Agrippa has what's known as a salvo meter. This is essentially the crowd's reaction to what you're doing, with the crazier and bigger things causing the crowd to go wild. This could result in a super weapon when your meter is filled, and needless to say, those weapons can be absolutely devastating. Now what about Octavianus? Well he has a really different and unique playstyle from Agrippa. As shown earlier, he can only take one hit, so he's not exactly going to be getting in any fights. He sneaks around and uses more household items as weapons, jugs, rope, flour, uh, rats and frogs, uh, bananas, oh shit. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, I promise these items are useful. You know, jugs are able to knock out anyone, you know, that's, that one, there you go. Ropes are allowing you to, you know, live out your Roman kinks, thank God. Flower oh, gives you the ability to blind opponents. Rats and frogs are able to scare female characters. And the bananas make funny slip time. Oh. Octavianus can also steal clothes to get past guards or go to certain areas. But since you're like a small boy and you obviously look like a child, you can get put into dialogue where you have to talk your way out of things. Or you could be a snooty bitch and ignore the guards because they're beneath you, Mr. Senator, of course. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> now, in conclusion, Shadow of Rome is a really unique and fun game that was supposed to get a sequel, but it ended up becoming Dead Rising. I'm not mad, I'm just a little disappointed and I kind of want to die. But jokes aside, there is so much more to this game, and I would highly recommend to anyone who thinks they might enjoy it to check it out. In my opinion, it is truly a timeless game that to this day I enjoy playing so much. Obviously, I didn't show off a crazy amount of stuff that goes on in this game. I only showed off a very small amount because I genuinely want people to try this out and enjoy it for what it is, and it's full Roman glory! I rate this PS2 classic 69 out of 10.